Hey, good morning, and we are wrapping up this week uh, the, best, the best summer ever. So if you've not had the best summer ever, it ends today, so I don't know what to tell you. Uh, good luck next year, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But we uh, hopefully you have uh, enjoyed the summer so far. I know that I have, but uh, Cheryl asked you a question earlier if anybody ever felt, has anybody in the last two weeks felt anxious about anything? Anybody? Just like stuff you didn't get done? Like, yeah, I know. I, like, I know everybody hates to raise their hand in church. I don't know why that is, but it, it's true. But we are, have been talking about having the best summer ever, and I believe that we've had a pretty good start around here. I mentioned last week we've, we've baptized like, I don't know, 14 or 15 people. I baptized another one this last week, which was cool. You'll get to see that next week. So yeah, uh, that's a good start to the summer. We've dedicated babies and kids, and it's just been a good summer so far around this place. And, and uh, it's always great to do that. But really just been talking about what that means, what that looks like, how we can uh, trust Jesus and not worry that we can allow the Holy Spirit to work through us and, and lead us uh, into what could be our best summer ever. And so uh, this, this morning, I was just thinking uh, this week and how to wrap this series up, and um, it's just been, it's been a little bit crazy around our house. I, I, we've got a wedding coming up, like this, this Friday, we're gonna, my oldest daughter's going to get married, and so I'm not crying, you are, uh, but I've uh, got to walk through that, but just a lot of stuff going on around our house, and uh, so I have a number I want to throw out to you just this morning, I want to give you a heads up. Uh, there's 168 days till Christmas, just so you know, uh, just thought I'd throw that out there, and uh, there's 168 days left, and so get your Christmas shopping done. But I I don't know, and Cheryl and I were in Walmart uh, this weekend, and uh, which is always a horrible thing, but uh, we were in Walmart, and uh, like, have you been in Walmart lately? Like, uh, Like, all the glue sticks and crayons are out already, right? Like, back to school is already out there, and so it's crazy to think that I don't know about you, but I look forward. We start around our house, like we're warm weather people, like anybody, like I hate the cold, I mean, it's, it's fine through Christmas and everything, but about mid-January around our house, like we're sick of it. Like we've had it up to here and we're like, we are looking forward to summer and we start thinking about all the stuff that we want to do and the places we want to go. And, and uh, February and March are just brutal for us around our house. And April and May, it's just kind of a, you never know what you're going to get. But uh, June, July, and August, you can kind of plan on some warm weather, right? Like you plan on it being nice outside. You plan on stuff that you want to do. And I always have a ton of plans for summer. And, and, and in my mind, walking into the summer season, it's going to be the best summer summer ever, right? Like this is going, uh, and, and we say, th- I've, I've told Cheryl, like, I'm going to take, we're going to take some time. We're going to, we're going to relax. We are going to do, we're just going to enjoy this warm weather and spring hits and those first warm days pop out. And you're like, oh, it's, it's going to be great summer. It's going to be great summer. And then you find yourself, uh, you know, where we're at today on July 10th. And you're like, okay, I haven't done any of the stuff I wanted to do. <laughs> and it's, I feel it slipping through my fingers. Like there's places I wanted to go and things I wanted to do. And I have a laundry list like Cheryl has, like uh, in the past, she didn't do it to me this year, but in the past, there's been like a list of things I need to get done on the refrigerator. Like it's just like, and it's a whole year's worth of stuff, like paint the house, build an addition, like, you know, I, it's just, it's ridiculous stuff. So we have all this stuff and, and I don't know about you, but I'm sure some of you, I know some of you have kids that are playing ball and you're, you're running from one ball game to the next and you are like, I don't have time time to even breathe, let alone like think about anything that I want to do. So it doesn't, it ends up being not the best summer ever. And the fact of the matter is we are just like, everybody is just busy. Like it, you talk to somebody and you, you mention it to them and they're like, yeah, I, I'm just so busy. We got so much junk going on. Like, uh, and it does, it seems like there's ball games and mowing the lawn and work and school and meetings and obligations and weddings and, uh, and we're just always busy. And so I was checking this out and I was feeling that this week and I did some research um, and, and there, was a, there was an article that I read this week in the New York Post and it said, U.S. adults say that they feel relaxed approximately 40 minutes a day on the average. Isn't that crazy? Only 40 minutes of your day. And 47% of the people surveyed said that they have fewer minutes of peace than that, according to this new self-care poll that is crazy. And and we just are, uh, the fact of the matter is, I think in our culture, and it's just American culture, I don't know that it's this way everywhere, but in American culture, we, we don't know how to slow down do we? 
Like we, we have lost the ability to rest and relax and know what that feels like. Um, uh, I, I know I'm always picking on Cheryl, but she's, uh, she's you know, she's my subject matter. But uh, we, uh, she's going to love this. But last, and it's an example of, and we, we have a pool at our house. And um, every now and then, Cheryl and I were like, okay, we're going we're gonna to go sit by the pool. Like, we're just going to relax. We're going we're gonna to take uh, this afternoon, and we're just going to sit by the pool. And we've done some work recently. We had to pour new concrete. It's been, it's been awful. Uh, but anyway, uh, this, so this, a couple days ago, we were like, we had a day off. And we're like, okay, we're just going to sit by the pool. We're going to relax. We're just going to chill here by the pool for a couple hours. Uh, we don't have to get up to do anything. We have to be anywhere. We didn't have anywhere to go that night. We're like, we're just going to relax. And Cheryl can't do it. Like, she just cannot do it, admittedly. But she, so there was this bucket of concrete stakes that was sitting on the back side of the pool that I hadn't just had, I, I just hadn't put up yet. I picked them up, put them in a bucket, but I, had, I left the bucket there. And so, like, sitting there, we sat by the pool, and we were sitting there for, like, two minutes, and Cheryl's, she just sits there and looks at all the stuff that needs to be done. Like, she just sits and goes, oh, I need to pull that weed, and she'll get up and pull the weed, and then she'll come back and sit down. And then she's like, okay, that bucket of stakes, like, can you just move that bucket? I'm like, yeah. I'll, I'll move it. Like, she's like, no, seriously, we've got people coming over. Can you just, like, right now? We had to move the bucket of steaks, like, right now. So we got up and moved the bucket of steaks. I was going to put them in the back the bucket of the tractor because it was super heavy. And so she was going to lift this bucket of steaks into the bucket of the tractor, and then she pulled her back. So there's that. So the fact of the matter is, like, I, I just, we just don't, we, we just can't, we just can't do it. We don't find the time to relax, and the majority of us have forgotten how to relax. I read another survey. There was 2,000 adults interviewed in this survey, and the findings showed that 75% of those surveyed said that they experienced no downtime or no relaxation. And so the most common reason for that is job or anxiety or things on our mind or things that we feel like we have to do. And so I wanted to just spend the time, if we're going to have the best summer of our life, what does the Bible say? What does Scripture say about uh, this, this thing of relaxation and rest? And I think sometimes we think that it's kind of overrated and, well, I'll, you know, some people say, well, you know, I'll sleep when I die or whatever, you know. And some of us are just wound that tight. But the Bible actually has a ton to say about finding rest and relaxation in this, in this period of summer. And it really starts from the very beginning. I mean, Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 2 through 3 says this, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And Jerry, I know you probably have heard that scripture before, and you've been, if you've been around church, you knew that God created the earth in six days, and then on the seventh day, he rested. And as a kid growing up, uh, we, like, it used to be that you protected Sunday, right? Like Sunday was protected. Like there was a, there was, it was the one day of the week where you didn't have anything else going on. You didn't book any plans. There were no ball games. People respected Sunday. And now that, that's not true, is it? Like there is no respect for that for that day of rest and where that is. And I know that's some of that's kind of Old Testament uh, law, but, but the fact of the matter is God created the earth in six days and on the seventh day he rested. Why did he do that? Was God tired? Does God get tired? No, he doesn't get tired. God doesn't ever get tired. So why would he do that? Why on earth would he create this world and then for the seventh day he commanded them to do the same? And so God created six days and then he rested and he commanded us to do the same. And the command was to rest and, and it, wasn't a, it wasn't a command to, to just be lazy. It was a, God rested not because he was tired but because he was setting an example for us to follow. He knew, God knew that we, and he desires rest for us because it does not come easily or naturally for us. Each one of us have stuff that we pack our schedule full, and to rest, we have to truly trust that God is going to take care of the stuff that we're anxious about or the stuff that we feel like we can't stop to, to, to take a rest of our, we have to actually lean into that and trust that God's going to take that, that it's going to be there tomorrow, that it's going to be there the next day, and some of us just can't do that. We have have to trust that if we take off a day, the world will not stop spinning. And so one of the definitions of relax is to become less firm. I didn't, I didn't read that before, but actually to rest means, uh, the, the word rest means 
peace, ease, or refreshment. And the word relax means to become loose or less firm and to have a mild manner to be less stiff. So if we are going to be less stiff, we have to release our grip on some of the stuff that we're holding on to so tightly that we are trying to control in our life, the stuff that we can't control, the stuff that you're anxious about. I know some of you, you know, are, are waiting on, on things from the doctor this week. You're waiting on to hear test results. I know some of us have stuff that we're worried about. I don't know about you, but uh, yeah, real estate taxes are due here in a couple of weeks. So that's just great. But I just, you, we get anxious about all that stuff, and we have to be able to let loose and turn loose of our grip if we're going to be able to. And, and God was the perfect example of that. And so, uh, so how do we do that? Where do we find it? How do we manage to get, how do we build some time in our schedule or whatever we need to do? And so there's a famous story in Luke, and, and you, if you've been around church, you've heard this, but it's a story uh, when Jesus went to visit Mary and Martha, and some of you already know the story, right? Uh, Jesus went to visit his friends, Mary and Martha, and uh, they knew he was coming. And so anytime you have uh, someone over to your house, there's always that pressure, right? Like we got to pick up and throw everything under the bed and don't open that closet and, and pretend like we all live that way, right? <laughs> but we don't. But, he, uh, you know, it, we have to make all these preparations, and, and that's what Martha was doing. She knew that Jesus was coming to her house. She knew that she would needed to prepare a meal. She wanted to make this experience great for Jesus. And so uh, she was busy doing all of the work, and her sister was not. Um, Mary had chosen to just kind of sit at, at Jesus' feet and hang out with Jesus. And so let me read it. It's in uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 40. It says, But Martha was distracted by all of the preparations that had to be made. She came to ask him, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me? to do all the work by myself, tell her to help me. <laughs> have you ever been there? Like, uh, I, I know I have. You just like, I'm the only one doing this, the work. I'm the only one that empties the trash. I'm the only one. And Martha was like, the Lord answered. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. In other words, Jesus is saying, there's only one thing that you need to be doing right now is spending time with me. He said, Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. In other words, Jesus says, no, I'm not going to tell her to get up. I'm not going to tell her to get up off her chair and, and, and go help you with this meal. That's not what is important here. What is important is me. And, and I think sometimes we, we read that story and we're like, okay, well, I can't just sit around every day. I have to go to work. I have things I have to get accomplished. But my question is, are there things that you are doing to carve out time to just sit at the feet of Jesus? And, and often that's difficult for us. I know sometimes like uh, when we go out to eat, we'll say, Cheryl, Cheryl's, really, Cheryl's really good about like saying, okay, everybody put up their phone. Like, we'll put up our phone, and, and we can't do it. We live in this constant world that we need to be stimulated all the time. And to sit in silence for a little bit is, is, is crazy hard for some of us. Like, we can't do it. It's next to impossible for some of us. And that's what Mary was doing. She was just sitting and soaking up Jesus. So for a committed follower of Jesus, the ultimate rest is found in him. He invites us to entrust all of our carries and worries on him, and it's only when we learn to do that. Now, I know that's, that's easy said. That's, like, that's something that rolls off a pastor's tongue. Just trust God. Put your, put your, but I don't know if you've just stopped to think about what that looks like. There have been things over the past several months that I've, that I've been anxious about, and it usually hits me about 2.30 in the morning. Is anybody else right there? Like, I, we, you just, just call me. I'm up. Okay, we'll talk about it. Because <laughs> usually I'm up, you know, or I'm awake at 3 in the morning, and I'm laying there just staring at the ceiling, and my mind is just rolling about all of the stuff that I need to be preparing for and things that I need to get done and stuff I got to pay for and stuff that how am I going to get this done and how am I going to get that done and what do we need to do different with the church and how do we, it, it just, it just, it's all in there. It's like a BB in a box car just rolling around up in there all night long. And I don't know about you, but in the last, that particular thought process of trusting Jesus <laughs> in the last several weeks, 
I have learned to just let that go. I have learned to really just say, God, I can't control it. I need you to take it. And I'm just going to trust you with it. I'm just going to trust that you've got it. That you'll have my back. And when this bill comes due, we'll have the money to pay for it. And when this comes due, or, or when that surfaces... That situation is going to resolve itself, and the stuff that I'm anxious about, and the stuff that I'm worried about, and the stuff that I'm driving myself, and all the stuff that I want to get accomplished, and all the stuff that I want to provide for my family and my kids, I just want you to have it. I want, I want to just sit at your feet, and I want to unload that, and I want to take a collective, and I want you to just take it. And I'm telling you, in the last couple weeks, I have slept like a baby. So don't call me now. Two weeks ago, you could have called me. Don't call me anymore. I'm asleep. Because I have learned to just let that go. I have learned to just sit at the feet of Jesus and say, you take it. You worry about it. And really, when you read that story, it's just a story about priorities. It's about Mary having her priorities right. And Martha was focused on stuff that she didn't need to really be focused on. So my question is, do you have your priorities right? Have you learned to really trust him with the stuff in your life? Am I worried about what I need to accomplish over spending time with Jesus? And followers of Jesus aren't called to either sit or serve. They're called to do both. So the challenge comes when finding the balance to do both and to find the moments to sit at the feet of Jesus when we need to do that, to find the moments to serve. And realistically, we can't just quit our jobs and and just all sit at the feet of Jesus every day. I realize that. But here's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, And I will give you rest. So if you're looking for rest this summer, if you're looking to just take a collective sigh from your schedule and all that you got going on, Jesus, in his own words, said, hey, come to me. He said, take my yoke upon you. And yoke is that thing, that wooden thing that goes on cattle's neck, right? It's heavy. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your soul. I don't know about you, but that sounds good. That sounds like the best summer ever is to have rest in our soul. Because he said in verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And our jobs become easier and our schedules become easier and our life becomes easier when we learn how to carve out some time and spend with Jesus and lay all of our junk at his feet and then get up and walk away from it. Do I have, are there any overpackers in the room? You know who you are. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, I see that hand all over this place. There's over, like when you go on a trip, like you, you've got like way too much junk. Anybody with that? Yeah, okay. Great. I'm glad I'm not suffering alone with my family there. <laughs> when we take a trip, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like there have been moments, like when the we, girls were younger, we would go to Florida and we had a Tahoe and we had one of the rooftop things. It's the Sport SV120, if you're wondering to know. It's great. You put a lot of crap up there. But, um, we would, uh, no kidding, we had one of the, we had a Tahoe, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. We had one of those, like, rooftop carriers. It was full. Mind you, we were going to Florida for a week. Like, we weren't moving there, uh, but we were going to Florida for a week. And um, we had that thing, and then I also had to borrow, like, one of the little, little hitch hauler things that go on the back. Oh, yeah, it was that serious. And we had the hitch hauler thing on the back. I had to buy a special bag to keep all of our junk dry on the back. And I'm not kidding, going through the mountains in Tennessee, I thought I was going to tip over. Like, there were moments 
going through the corner, and I'm like, okay, here it goes. We're, we're going over. It was just so top-heavy. We had so much junk, and, and I'm like, I can't. Like, I, I just can't do it. Like, we have serious overpacking problem in my family, and I think when we look at our schedules, some of you have that same thing going on with your schedule. In fact, I had a conversation, um, and, and it, imp- it impacts our ability uh, it impacts your ability to grow in your, in your relationship with Jesus Christ when your schedule is that full. When you have overpacked your schedule so full that you don't have time to sit at the feet of Jesus, that's a problem. Okay? And, and I, it was interesting. I, I met with our church board that you guys recently elected at our last board meeting, and uh, we've been just carving some time out of our board meeting to talk about uh, different things and, and not necessarily just church business, but like, and I think the question that we talked about, some of you are here, uh, we talked about what it meant to be a disciple, right? And, um, and, we, and typically in the fall, and we'll do it again this year, we'll launch grow groups around this place and we'll launch uh, these, these groups that people have an opportunity to get in and grow in their faith because really that's where your growth happens. It happens in, communi- in community in a small group with other believers in Jesus Christ. It doesn't really happen a lot here on Sunday morning just listening to me ramble. You might get some tidbits that you can apply to your life. But if you're really wanting to grow spiritually and grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to do that in community with other believers because iron sharpens iron. And so we were talking about that in the board meeting and just talking about what it means to be a disciple. And it was interesting. Even as our board, we were like, I don't know that I have time for a grow group. Like, I don't think I can fit that in my schedule. Like, the thought of me adding one more thing to my schedule, I know, it's, I know it's important, and I know it's, you know, growing in my relationship with Jesus, but I just don't have time for that right now. I do not have time to sit at the feet of Jesus, is basically what you're saying. For a minute, for an hour out of your week. And we are booking ourselves too tight. And it really comes down to a priority thing. Martha had her priorities right, or Mary did. Martha did not. Mary had her priorities. She knew that, yeah, there was dishes to be washed and dishes to be cleaned and stuff to do in the kitchen and meat to be cut or whatever it was that Martha was freaking out over. But she's like, you know what? I'm going to sit right here because this is what I need. I need rest. I need to take a collective sigh. I need to unload this anxiety that I'm carrying around, and that is more important than the junk I've booked my schedule with. You know, one of the things that we've tried to do around here with grow groups is, is like, um, we've tried to create these grow groups and get people to lead them and, and carve out a time when you have child care. It's, it, it's, it's pretty tricky to try to get, honestly, a lot of churches struggle with it, and discipleship is a, is a, is a big deal. Discipleship basically means uh, caring for somebody else and, and, and growing, in their, growing your faith together. Basically, being a follower of Jesus and pulling somebody else along. Um, I need to be pulled along by somebody, and I need to be pulling somebody else along with me. You all are the same, Okay? And so one of the things that we've struggled with, and I'm just being really transparent, is like it's a struggle for us to find people that will say, yeah, I'll lead a small group. Uh, We're going to talk about this more. But more importantly, um, what I would rather see is that that you all would meet somebody here today. And uh, here's the other thing that came out of that meeting is we've decided to leave the chairs up at the end of service. And um, it's interesting, most Sundays we have a, we have a group of, of hearing impaired people that sit right down here on Sunday mornings, and they're not here today because Connie wasn't able to be here to sign to them. But out of one of the things that um, Connie's actually served on our board, and she's like, one of the questions that they ask is, why do we pick up chairs so quickly after church? They don't, they, they don't hear that. All they do is feel it. And so one of the things that we're going to stop doing around here is picking up church right, chairs right after church because I want you guys to be able to build community on your own. I want you to be able to talk to each other 
and not just race out to, I mean, we get out at 11 o'clock. We'll beat people at El Rancherito, I promise. What would happen if we would just start to build community organically? And you invite somebody over to your house just because you want to invite them over to their house. You want to get to know them and you want to get to hang out with them and you want to carve out some time to sit at the feet of Jesus. That's my goal. That's my dream for this place, for all of you. It's because when we do that and we stop booking ourselves so tight that we don't have an hour to carve out of our week, It affects our discipleship in our community. God created us to be in community. And here's the thing. Here's what's interesting. Um, All over our all over our city and all over America, people are finding community and building community with other people. But they're doing it better outside the church than we do it in here. Like there's more of a community with T-ball people than there are with church people. You don't believe me? There's more of a community with travel ball people than there is with people you go to church with and people that we should be centered around this ultimate goal of serving an amazing Savior and telling people about He, he did everything for us. And if, there should be, if ever there should be a place for community, it should be here in the church. But we struggle with that because we've got to order the number 18 at El Rancherito, you know, or whatever it is. The Moco Yete. I don't know what you get. We have to find time to rest, and we have to find time to allow ourselves to rest. And I think some of us carry around such a sense of responsibility and commitment that we feel guilty or we feel lazy if we're not constantly doing something. I've wanted to go fishing all summer. How many times I've been? None. Studies show that it takes... Have you ever gone on vacation? Uh, has anybody ever gone on vacation and then uh, by the end of the week you finally feel relaxed and then it's time to come back to work? Has anybody ever noticed that? Studies show... I read a study this week. It shows that it takes three, but most genuinely eight days to completely de-stress and relax from our schedule. And the Bible places such a high value on rest and peaceful living. I mean, read, this, read Jesus. Read about his life. I don't think anyone was any busier than Jesus. But he constantly and routinely separated himself from people and from his own disciples, and he would go alone and sit at the feet of the Father. Mark chapter 6, verse 31 said this, Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. And I bet if we took a survey, some of you have had days where you're like, yeah, you know what, I haven't even had a chance to eat anything. Haven't you? Then because so many people were coming and going that they didn't even have a chance to eat, he said. Then he told his disciples, this is what Jesus was speaking to his disciples, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. I think that's good advice. It's good advice for all of us. Some of you this week need to say no to some things. Some of you this week needs to carve out some time to come with me, Jesus says, by yourself and get some rest. I've noticed, I've noticed uh, that certainly over the past several years, it's been difficult for us to do that. People are finding it incredibly difficult to switch off and relax. Philippians 4, verse 6, 7. I will just wrap up with this. I don't, know what, I don't know what you brought in with this week. I don't know what you're packing out of here this week. I don't know what you, 
what your life has been like. Um, I don't know. Some of you may be really good at this. Maybe some of you are really, and if you, if you are, help the rest of us, will you? But figure out how to unpack your schedule this week. It's okay to say no to some things, even some good things. Not church stuff, because we need you here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to actually talk about that here in a little bit, but in the next, in the next series. But um, we've got to find that balance. And so Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, 7 says this, and I'll leave you with this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God... <laughs> The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So my question to you is this, is is within within the time that we have left before the Hallmark Christmas movies start showing, and we have to live through that, before all that gets here, in the time that we have left this summer, there's still a few weeks left before the kids go back to school and before... Stuff gets hectic again, and our schedules get crazy, and maybe ball's coming to an end, or, or whatever it is. Maybe you have a little bit of time in your schedule. How can, ask yourself this, how can I find some rest and relaxation this summer? And I think it begins with spending some time with God and unloading that. Spending a, some time alone at the feet of Jesus. It starts there, I promise you, it starts there. And we must be intentional about making that time to rest in Jesus. Let the phone ring. Let the chores wait. Social media could probably use a break. Those things are not eternal. Jesus is eternal. Spend time with him. Carve out some time with him this week. And I promise you, the rest of your summer will be the best summer you've ever had. I promise you that. Make time for that. And as we get into the fall, think about, uh, think about growing in community with somebody else that's sitting around you or in front of you or behind you. Or maybe there's people here that you don't know. Chairs up. You don't have to put chairs up today. Woo! We're going to leave them up. Introduce yourself to somebody. Hang out with somebody. Take a minute to breathe. The chairs will wait. They'll be here tomorrow. And we'll find somebody else to pick them up. Okay? Stand with me. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us, and thank you for just a reminder that we can take a breath, or that we can, that we can, that maybe if there's somebody here this week that is just, that have booked themselves so incredibly tight that they haven't been able to take a lunch break, let alone relax. And Father, I just pray that, that we would get into this rhythm of rest in our life, that we would be intentional about it. Lord, that we would that we would retrain ourselves how to sit in silence at the feet of Jesus. Lord, that we'll turn the TV off, that we'll turn our phones off, that we'll just spend some time with our family, that we'll spend some time with those around us that can pour into us and encourage us and pray for us and give us strength. Lord, help us to be the kind of congregation that builds that kind of community organically, and it's not something that's based on a program or when it starts on a calendar date. It starts now. It starts with all of us. It starts with us uh, pouring into each other and making times for those relationships, especially the relationship with you. And Father, I just pray that more than anything, that as we leave this place, that we would seek some alone time with you, that we would step away from the busyness of our life and the busyness that can come with summer and all that it brings, that Lord, that we would find some time to just sit and relax and spend time with you. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for uh, modeling. God, thank you for modeling that for us. Thank you for showing us and being the ultimate example of what that rhythm should look like in our life and help us to follow you in that example. Father, thank you so much for this church. Thank you for those who work diligently through the week. And thank you for all that, that, that work to, to make this place uh, welcoming and, and a place that we can come and, and spend time with you. We thank you so much for your love for us. Take us from this place. Help us to find this rest this week and to have the best summer ever. In your name I pray. Amen. Have a great week.